Okay, with escape sequences out of the way, let's move on to different data types. I know escape sequences and escape characters isn't the most fun thing in the world, and you won't use them terribly often with the exception of probably the new line escape sequence, but there's something we have to go over, so I'm, I'm glad we powered through that. Now let's look at data type examples. I'm going to do take a look at those over here in the shell. One of the things that I alluded to back in lesson four was that Python always takes input statements as a string. So let's create a variable called numsoda, and I'm going to have the user input how many cans of soda have you had today? And I'm going to use backslash n as an escape sequence, put a colon, and I'm going to execute this line. I can see the escape sequence was interpreted correctly. How many cans of soda have you had today? And I've been pretty light on the soda today, believe it or not. I've had three so far. And so now num soda is equal to the value of three. Now I'm gonna have another variable called num coffee equal to input. How many cups of coffee have you had today? Backslash n colon. And just like the last line, it says how many cups of coffee have you had today? And I've had one. And I can take a look at that variable and I can see that num coffee is equal to the value of one. Then I'm going to create a third var variable called beverages. And I'm going to set it equal to the number of sodas I've had plus the number of coffees I've had. And if this works correctly, I sh it should come back and say 3 plus 1 equals 4, and so beverages should be equal to 4. But when I check beverages, it's not equal to 4, it's equal to 31. Now, there's a big difference between 4 and 31. That's because Python interprets all input as strings. It's no different than if I said, I want AA plus BB, it returns AABB. If I say I want the string of 31 plus the string of 47, it's interpreting those as characters, almost as if they're letters of the alphabet and not necessarily numbers. So when we concatenate these together, I get 3147. Now if I have the number 31 plus the number 47, that's going to return 78. But the string of 31 plus the string of 47 returns 3147. That is a very big piece of information to keep in mind. When you're having your users input numbers and you want them to be handled as a mathematical value, you have to convert it from a string to a number. And there's a, a function that we can use called type. If I ask Python what is what data type is numsoda, it'll come back and say that is a string. Let's set a variable num equal to 47. And if I say, Python, what is the data type of num? It comes back and says that class or that type is integer. And then if I had a number, and we'll start in a variable number two, and we'll call it 3.14, and I ask Python, what type is num2? It's going to come back and reference it as a float. So the type command is relatively useful. The most common way that I use the type command is in program debugging when I can't quite figure out why a program isn't executing correctly. A lot of times I'll look at my variable and run the type command on it to see what type of data I'm using. And that's a pretty common problem for me when I'm writing smaller programs. We'll look at a couple other ways to use the type command as well, for, but for right now, uh, the type function just returns the type of data that is stored within a variable. 
Now there's two, well, I guess three. There's three different functions that we can use to convert data back and forth. There's the str function, the int function, and the float function. The str function converts any data to a string. The int function converts any data to an integer. And the float function converts data to a float. So very quickly, let's just look at beverages again. Beverages is equal to the string of 31. If I want to convert that to an integer, I can say the int of beverages. And when Python returns this, it doesn't have the delimiters, the string delimiters around it. So by typing int beverages, I'm telling Python to interpret this as the number 31 is the integer 31 and not the string 31. Similarly, I could type float beverages and Python is going to return the string of 31 as if it were a float. Now I can't convert letters to an integer. If I had a string called name and let's set it equal to Steve, if I tried to get the integer of name, it would come back and give me an error, invalid literal for int with a base 10 Steve. It's Python's way of telling you you're trying to convert to a number something that isn't a number. But if we go back to our example at the top, I know num soda is equal to three, the string of three, and num coffee is equal to the string of one. And if I do num soda plus num coffee, I'm going to get the string 31. But if I take the integer value of num soda and add it to the integer value of num coffee, I'm going to get the proper response, which is 4. So if I want beverages to be correct, I've got to set it equal to the integer value of num soda plus the integer value of num coffee. When Python interprets this, it will take the numerical equivalent of num soda and num coffee, add them together, and now beverages is equal to 4, as it should be. Okay, so we've gone ahead and cleared our screen, and we're just going to look at a practical application or a practical program that we could use that utilizes some of these concepts here. So I said I've got shell cleared on the left, and over here I'm going to write a program, and we're going to call this our beverage counter. The point of this program is going to ask the user to input the number of sodas they've had plus the number of coffees they've had, and then our program will add those two numbers together and print a statement or a message to the user letting them know how many drinks they've had in a day. So just like I did in the shell, I'm going to set a variable num soda. I'm going to set it equal to the input statement of how many sodas today. I'm going to use my escape sequence. And then I'm going to do the same thing for num coffee and set it equal to how many coffees today. And I'm just going to test the program here. Press F5 to run it. It's been saved as test.py. And it says how many sodas today? Three. How many coffees today? One. And just for, for now, I'm going to do a print statement in which I take num soda plus num coffee and see what I get. And if I have three sodas and one coffee, it prints 31. Now this is the problem that I was talking about over on the left. Both three and the one are being inputted as strings, and so when they're concatenated together, we're getting 31. This would be the same problem if, if I were to execute it and say I've had uh, 10 sodas and four coffees, it's going to print off 104. And so there's, the, f the first thing I want to do is I want to convert the response to an integer. So I'm going to have beverages, the variable, be equal to the integer value of num sodas 
plus the integer value of num coffee. And we, when we add an integer to an integer, we get a number. So I'm going to change my print statement to print beverages. And I'm going to run this program. How many sodas did you have today? Four. How many coffees? Two. And it prints six. So right now, my program is able to take the number of sodas the users had plus the number of coffees the user have had and add those two numbers together to get a real integer number of beverages. But that's kind of a boring message. We want to print a creative message to the user or a more exact message. So I'm going to start by just printing maybe a row of asterisks. And then I'm going to have it print you have had plus beverages beverages today. And when I do that, how many sodas? Four, coffees, two. I get, can't convert integer to string implicitly. What I'm trying to do is that error is completely caused by this line. I'm trying to concatenate a string that contains an integer. When I add an integer to an integer, beverages ends up being of type integer. What I need to do is now convert that integer to a string so I can concatenate it with the rest of the string. I'm going to convert beverages back to a string using the str command. This is the first time we've seen this, but the str command just converts data to a string type. So it's going to take, in the last case, the number six and make it the string of number six. And that is a string can concatenate with the rest of a string. When I run this program, how many sodas? Five. How many coffees? One. I've had six beverages today. I'm going to run this again and test it with eight sodas and two coffees. That should give me 10. We're going to execute it again. I'm going to not have anything, so I've had zero sodas and zero coffees today. You've had zero beverages today. And so with three tests, my program appears to be running correctly. Now I would get in the habit, um, especially early on, try and run your program with every possible combination you can think of. Have zero sodas and a lot of coffees. Have a lot of sodas and zero coffees. The more you test your program when it's in its infancy, the less bugs you'll have in the bigger programs when you get to write them. But right here we have a simple program that asks the user to input the number of sodas, the number of coffees, and then ends up putting that into a beverages number. Now, I mean, I could do some simple additions to this. Maybe I want to do num water and input how many waters today. And so this program becomes expandable. Now all I have to do is add the int of num water. Now I'm adding three numbers together, executing the program. How many sodas have I had? I've had three sodas, one coffee, and four waters. Three plus one plus four is eight. Now I have eight beverages today. So this program is relatively bug-free. Looks like it's working okay. And as we do more complex programs, there's going to be a lot of different ways to use this integer function. There's going to be a lot of ways to use the string function. The main thing to take away from this lesson, though, if you're asking your user to input a number, just make sure that you're converting it to a number if you plan on doing math. If you just plan on printing it out, you're fine. But if you want to add two numbers that the users have inputted together, you're going to have to convert those to numbers from strings. All right, so as we get ready to end lesson five, we're going to see how much uh, you guys have actually picked up on. And I've written a small program that asks the user to input their adventurer's name, their weapon, and how much their weapon weighs, their armor, and how much their armor weighs, and how many rations they want to bring along on the adventure and then prints an inventory summary. And that's all it does right now. We'll add some functionality and add some cool stuff to it.
but let's take a look at the, how the program executes. So over here in the uh, Python shell, this is Welcome Adventure, to the land of Whispering Springs. By what name are you called? Enter your name. And so my adventure is going to be named Pythonius. And what weapon do you wield? Well, Pythonius is going to have a sword. I see. And how much does your sword weigh? It's a six-pound sword. What are you protected with? Enter the armor type. And Pythonius is going to have chainmail armor. How much does chainmail weigh? Let's say it weighs 12 pounds. I don't know if those are actually accurate. I'm kind of making these numbers up. Well, last question. How many rations have you brought? Enter no more than 10. I'm going to bring seven rations with me. Each ration has a weight of one pound, and then it prints off kind of a summary little inventory right there. It says Pythonius's inventory. He's got a sword that weighs six pounds, chainmail 12 pounds, seven rations that total seven pounds. The total inventory weight is 25 pounds. That's all there is to it. Uh, I could execute this program again and enter different information. Enter your uh, adventure name. Pythonita, and Pythonita is going to have a dagger weighing it at only two pounds, but is going to be wearing heavy plate mail that weighs 18 pounds, and because of that, uh, Pythonita is only going to bring two rations. You can see the inventory that is displayed is completely different. It has the player's name in the inventory title. It's got the dagger, the plate mail, and the two rations. It's put into a relatively easy to read table, and the program calculates the weight. So that is your goal after watching lessons one through five, is can you write the code to recreate the inventory program that I have displayed here? You're going to want to store the name of an adventurer in a variable, along with the name of their weapon and their armor. You're going to want to get the input for the weight in pounds of both the weapon and the armor and how many rations they're going to bring with at one pound each. And then the program assembles that into an inventory and does the math to keep track of a total weight. If you can handle that, you're in good shape. Now, as you execute this program or as you get started on it, feel free to leave any questions that you have in the comments. I'll be happy to help you out with any problems that you run across. And I look forward to seeing you in Lesson 6. Thanks and have a great day.